Welcome to the rat race. The rat race is a term used to describe a frustrating, hard to break, money based lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that is lived by billions of people, oblivious to the very nature of it, to a degree that even when called upon, they vehemently deny it. It involves subjecting yourself to a time consuming job, saddling yourself with heavy mortgages, rents, bills, money obligations, and liabilities, forcing you to continue breaking your back at the same job. Furthermore, the illusion that working at the same job will be financially safer bars you from experiencing alternatives of life, from truly living your life and expressing all the possibilities of your soul. The cultural belief in the idea of money has such a powerful grasp on our minds globally that we have come to succumb, submit and be enslaved by the disempowering belief that we could not possibly ever live an enchanted, wonderful, happy life without money. It is also a false belief that getting more and more money will solve this financial stress, but experience shows us that this simply gets you digging yourself deeper and deeper into the same hole of entrapment, toiling your life away today in the hopes of a better tomorrow when you're older and hoping for the best. Yet the world has shown us clearly and often that the golden retirement belief is a myth. What is predictable is that the rat race involves fear and bondage not choice, love, and liberty. The rat race is an endless, self-defeating and pointless pursuit. Many people today see their work as a seemingly endless pursuit with either little reward or little purpose or both. Many people today believe that long work hours in stressful jobs they may rather not be doing plus the time spent commuting to those jobs means less time for family life, friends life, and their own life and it has led to a generally unhappier population that is unable to enjoy the benefits of life. The trouble with the rat race is that even if you win, you're still a rat. It will likely have cost you your health, your relationships, lost life experience opportunities, and more. The rat race, as many of us know, leads to a sort of numbness inside and the constant knowing sense of having had and lost some infinite thing that you once possessed in another life in another place. An infinite precious thing that you came to earth with as a little child but somehow lost along the way. As the wave of awakening sweeps across the planet, don't you wish you could stop worrying about money so that you can focus on what really matters? Are you tired of counting pennies? Isn't there another way? A better way that provides fulfillment without turning you into a hippie in a hut. My challenge to you here is to consider the idea that there is another way. One that gives you even more, much, much more than the rat race can ever hope to provide. One that makes you happy and fulfilled as a being, a human being. One that leads you to truly value and love and cherish yourself and your time here on earth. One that is truly abundant in all ways. Do you really need money to live, to be happy, to be free, to be capable, to take care of your loved ones, to enjoy and have leisure and so on? Can you ever have a much, much better life by placing your reliance and your faith on something else other than money? You don't think so? Are you sure? I mean, do angels carry cash? Before we look at the solution to our problem, let us quickly understand what money is and why we are enslaved by it. Money is not evil, neither is it the root of evil. By itself, money is just paper and computer records, an idea. The problem is not the money, but our submission to it, our self-imposed worship of and enslavement by the idea of money. We create it, yet we enslave ourselves by our own creation. That is the problem. We have erected a false god, one that has no real powers except that which we give to it and we have proceeded to live day by day as if we are the powerless ones and the money rules us. Money seems to be at the heart of nearly every major problem in the world today from global warming, the raping of our mother earth to regional and global wars. It appears to be a barrier for poor people to access their needs, needs that they once accessed for free not so long ago. It is the leading cause cited for divorce, corruption, hate, oppression, political instability, you name it, 
the idea of money is likely behind it. Furthermore, we strangely believe that money provides for us when it is actually nature that does so. Nature, which includes your fellow human being. If all the money in the world disappeared tomorrow and the banking system shut down forever, would we still be able to plant crops, harvest, eat, go to the beach, pump fuel, do research and technology, build amazing things? Yes, we would. None of these things truly require money in and of themselves. It is we, humans, who insist on attaching currency to these activities. The activities themselves don't require it. Even Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, said that, and I quote, all money is a matter of belief. If our societies stopped believing the myths that support money, it would instantly be worth less than the paper it is printed on. We scramble for money because of the idea that only through money can we get our needs met. We believe money gets you stuff. It doesn't. It only appears to do so. A trillion dollars on the moon or on Mars where there is no oxygen and no vegetation is entirely worthless, which tells you that if we were to destroy the earth and deplete its natural resources, trillions of dollars here on earth also would be worthless. And the idea that money gets you stuff will immediately reveal itself to be a false premise. The only reason it appears to get us stuff is because we have all agreed to deny each other what we could so easily exchange freely unless we are given money in exchange. Which brings us to the next point, the biggest myth of all, on which money relies most on and without which money would have no power, is the myth that you and I are separate. Without this myth, my charging you for the gifts I bring to the world, gifts that I have originally been given by life is no less silly than you charging a tree for the nitrogen in your urine when you piss under that tree and then the tree charging you for the oxygen it produces for you to breathe. There are millions, billions of transactions and exchanges occurring in nature at every second and because they happen freely with no one keeping count or stopping the transactions because no one has paid for them, they blossom and the whole system flourishes. We, on the other hand, introduce bureaucracy, accounting, and flat out deny each other transactions because of money, and on the whole, it impoverishes all of us. It is applied technology and knowledge, not money, that moves humanity forward. If you got rid of money and still apply technology and knowledge, humanity would still progress. Money is simply a universally accepted permission slip and an inefficient accounting system to try keep track of exchanges that would otherwise happen anyways. This was its purpose, but it has now outlived its purpose. We are beginning to outgrow it, and like a foot that has become too big for its old shoes, we are starting to feel enslaved and trapped, squeezed and pained by this old archaic system. Perhaps worst of all, money is compromising our relationships, our food, our education, our health, our play, and so on. In each of these, we are conditioning ourselves to discount and disconnect from real meaning and instead see only price. Every day, you have internal battles between your integrity and convenience, between your passion and conformity, between your compassion and comfort. Often, money is the deciding factor, not humanity. Often, money wins the battle, and each time it wins, you lose a part of yourself. You fragment. Oneness is lost within you and with the rest of life and nature. We are conditioning ourselves to domesticate and enslave ourselves to serve and support the money machinery. Money is simply the consciousness of credit and debit made numerically exact. No more and no less. It is not a provider, although it appears to be. It is not security, although it appears to be. It is not a liberator, although it appears to be. Yet the money is not the problem. It is our voluntary submission to it and the myths around it that is causing this unnecessary tyranny. And beyond that, it is our belief in separation that is keeping us trapped. Our money is our spirituality expressed. The old idea of separation created the current financial system. We need a new spirituality, one based on the reality of the oneness of all of life. 
it is time to end the illusion of separation. You think that you have many different problems, but you really only have one, and that is your sense and belief in your separation from your maker. There is only one problem really, and therefore there is only one solution really. A return to love, a return to oneness with your creator. And this is why that is so. You see, the world looks flat, but now we know it is round. Yet the illusion of flatness persisted for thousands of years before mankind realized that the earth was indeed round. In the same way, separation, however persistent, is an illusion. There is only one, and this course will prove this to you conclusively, without doubt, once we get started. The belief in separation is at the root of all your problems and difficulties in more physical and mystical ways than you can consciously conceive. From the illusion of separation follows all the other illusions of man and the suffering that they must therefore bring being illusions. From the illusion of separation is born the illusion of need, something that would not exist if everything was indeed just one being. From the illusion of need is born the illusion of failure, to have those needs met, something that would be inconceivable if everything was indeed just one being. From failed fulfillment of needs is birthed the illusion of insufficiency, there being not enough for everybody. From here, the illusion of requirement is birthed, the idea that there is something you have to do to counter the insufficiency and therefore corner and secure your supply before someone else takes it. Next, the illusion of guilt, judgment and condemnation arises, that if you do not act that certain way, you will somehow be punished. That gives rise to the illusion of conditional love and the illusion of superiority of those who have been conditionally loved after doing what they were required to do. The final core illusion is that of ignorance, the pretense that you do not know that these are illusions. Even when the, that silent voice within you tells you that there is something wrong with the way the world is set up. As you can see, all these illusions and their subsequent problems depend on the original era of belief in separation otherwise known as the fall of mankind. You may have tried many solutions by now and realized they don't work completely. For example, the law of attraction works, but it is just a cog within a greater machinery, and so, by itself, it will not solve your problems, even though it will attract to you what you most think about. Only a return to oneness will solve your problems. The same goes for positive thinking, hard work, being a good person, religion, getting extra training, networking, and so on. You might ask, how on earth is this psycho-spiritual cause what I'm looking for? You might not know it right now, but you might discover as I did that this is exactly what you are looking for. When you live in the experience of oneness, one of the signs will be that you will be at peace and at one with yourself. 100% accepting and ecstatic about who, what, where, when, and why you are. You will be feeling safe, living in the moment completely, with total and absolute trust in life. You will finally be in sync with the whole universe, and therefore, you will automatically act perfectly and effortlessly, even in the face of challenges. You feel joy in what you do, and your actions will bring results. Another sign will be illumination, miracles, and revelation. The universe is made of love and is miraculous by nature. It is self-organizing and self-correcting. Whenever there is a deviation from love, it self-corrects. So, it is always in a state of perfection. Most of the time, we live struggling against the universe, and so it keeps breaking us as it self-corrects. The real secret is to live 100% in harmony with the universe. And that happens with a return to oneness, a return to love. 
This return to oneness is a single goal of this course, the outcome you can expect. To achieve this goal, we shall jointly study a course in miracles with a focus on holistic and spiritual abundance. This is what will replace the worship of and the fear of money. The basic teaching of A Course in Miracles is to learn to relinquish thoughts based on fear and replace them with thoughts based on love and eventually to shed the ego and realize the kingdom that has laid hidden within us all this time. Our job is to place ourselves in a receptive mode of consciousness whereby we can receive this miracle that has always been available. Scarcity and not having stems from the illusion of separation. Abundance lies in the practical experience of the reality of oneness and in that you will realize that even before you ask it is given at the right time with no waste and no mistakes. Miracles are everyone's right and they occur naturally as expressions of love. Once you accept to take this journey you will realize that everything in your life, all of it, down to the smallest iota will be miraculously used to take you back home to oneness. This journey will not always be easy and comfortable and you will face your deepest fears along the way but you will always be safe and you are guaranteed to succeed even though you may not know how long it will take. There will be highs and moments of incredible bliss and there will be times of challenges. It will begin small and slowly like a mustard seed and grow to an oak tree before you know it. A mind at peace is the only mind that can awaken and everything will lead you first to peace before it leads you to liberation. A mind harboring thoughts of attacking the self or attacking the other cannot enter the kingdom and this will be the first thing that will be healed, your lack of peace of mind. The course will get you to relax and to surrender the fight for your life completely and allow life to lovingly and wisely look after you moment to moment. As Marianne Williamson says, quote, we were taught a very bad philosophy, a way of looking at the world that contradicts who we are. We were taught to think thoughts like competition, struggle, sickness, finite resources, limitations, guilt, bad, death, scarcity, and loss. We were taught that things like grades, being good enough, money, and doing things the right way are more important than love. We were taught that we are separate from other people, that we have to compete to get ahead, that we are not quite good enough the way we are. We were taught to see the world the way that others had come to see it. Love is what we were born with. Fear is what we learned here. The spiritual journey is a relinquishment or unlearning of fear and the acceptance of love back into our hearts." End quotes. A Course in Miracles is mind training in the relinquishment of a thought system based on fear and separation and the acceptance instead of a thought system based on love and oneness. According to A Course in Miracles, this seeming separation from our Creator first happened millions of years ago. However, the key message of the Course is that in reality the separation never actually happened. The Course teaches us that love is real. It's an eternal creation and nothing can destroy it. Anything that isn't love is an illusion. Love in your mind produces love in your life. This is the meaning of heaven. Fear in your mind produces fear in your life. This is the meaning of hell. All our worldly problems are actually just symptoms of the real problem, which is always the belief in separation. Enlightenment is a recognition, an awakening and not a change. No one suggests that you quit using money called Turkey. What is asked is that you use your interactions with money to learn oneness and awaken it within you. Spirit can and will use anything and everything to lead you back home to oneness. With money, some of what will come up as you take this course is that you will, for example, transform from a sales and work mentality to a service mentality. People will come to your place of work or to your business not so much for the product or service you provide but so that you can give them love. You will also gradually redefine the purpose of your career so that it becomes a channel of love and divine will. So all you have to do eventually is let go and open your heart and mind and the rest will flow automatically. 
you will unblock your reception of money into your life and spiritualize your relationship to it. Eventually, you will see that its only purpose is to heal the world and bring it to oneness. You will gradually stop working for money and start working for love. Eventually, you will attain true abundance and life will take care of you, direct you, nourish you, flourish you, in joy and happiness, effortlessly and always on time. Through you, the global consciousness of money will be transformed. No one has wronged us more than we have wronged ourselves. Whenever we have great joy or success, we sabotage ourselves because our ego is threatened. For the great good does not match the little we think of ourselves. We share a hidden belief that there is something wrong with being too happy. We focus on and glorify suffering. The greatest problem is with who we think we are. We believe it is arrogant to be deserving of happiness, of good things, and to think of ourselves as children of God. This is the reason why we have set up ourselves to be enslaved by the idea of money. And a return to loving ourselves completely and unconditionally is the key to liberation. The cause aims at removing the blocks to the oneness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. A return to love is a return to oneness and an end to fear and illusions and misperceptions and bondage. The cause makes no claims to being the only form of truth or that it is the only spiritual path. It is not religious nor does it ascribe to any one particular religion. In fact, you will find all religions and more within the cause. Spiritually speaking, it is a challenging but direct path. It is a challenging path because it involves a radical paradigm shift, not in how we live in the world, but in how we see the world. A course in miracles is not concerned with dealing with the symptoms of suffering. It deals with the root cause of suffering, and that is the illusory sense of separation from your Creator.